So, Scott, you okay to speak from there? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Of course. Wherever you I wish. Stand up. Okay. Name. Hello, Scott Thompson. Hello, everyone. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Scott Thompson. I uh, was the principal drafter of the Callis Ibram Art Grant, um, and really appreciated the help of those who were with me, including Charlie and um, Yeshua. Thank you. Rick Dreyfus, Judy Fitch, Robert, who's not here. Um, it seems strange that here I am supposedly defending the, the, tech, the technology, and I don't have any. But um, first of all, what I'd like to do is just ask a question. Is there anybody here who has not made up his or her mind about the safety of Wi-Fi? Great. This is for you. Um, essentially, what I'd like to do is just um, explain why it is that I'm not persuaded by Ray's argument as, you know, as, as well done as it was. Um, and at the same time, to try to understand how it can be that a group of people, a community that is composed of intelligent, caring people, well-informed, sharing, in many cases, uh, very similar, if not the same values, can look at the, the same stuff. I mean, the, um, the scientific record, the institutional framework for dealing with it, um, in our own experience, and it come out in such a different place uh, as, as has happened. And perhaps also try to deal with, um, with the, you know, the, the fact of the emotion that has gotten into this, uh, into this uh, divergence of views. Because I think it's, um, I think it may help, at least it will help me to understand what's going on. But in the first place, just without getting into kind of dueling studies a la, a la Deliverance uh, 2011, um, essentially there, the, the first aspect of this that, that is problematic for me is, uh, as you mentioned before, Ray, it's very confusing when you first get into it. Um, but I think that confusion is actually inherent in the nature of what the scientific record is. Um, first of all, what I urge you all to do, I mean, Ray's presentation is, is very effective. Um, but, you know, in the spirit of being in a school, in the spirit of education, I urge you all to look at this for yourself and to do some research on your own um, and think for yourself and make up your own mind. Uh, from what I've been looking at, I've been looking at, you know, my own selection. Obviously, I can't look at everything. This, this subject has the bejesus studied out of it. There is no shortage of, of research on it. Um, you could spend an entire lifetime trying to, you know, trying to encompass it all. But what I found, and, and especially concentrating on the most recent peer-reviewed stuff, which um, the quality controlled stuff, in which they make an effort to incorporate what is known up to this point. The scientists themselves speak of the discussion of uh, mostly cell phone use and the, the biological effects of cell phone use as controversial. And they talk about inconsistent results. They talk about um, <coughs> methodologies that, that haven't been worked out. Um, basically, it's just controversial and inconsistent, and there's, there's really nothing solid to, to stand on when you get there. You have, for example, the studies that Ray has shown, but then you have a study, one that came out just last month, this, um, this Danish cohort study that amounts to something like, if I remember the figure correctly, 3.8 million person hours of cell phone use over uh, decades to see if there's any correlation with, uh, with brain cancer. And there's no correlation found is the, is the upshot of the study. 
So what you get is just, you can find pretty much, you can find studies that, that support the thesis that Wi-Fi is dangerous. You can find studies that suggest that it's not. It's not under normal circumstances. So anyway, this is just to, to give you a sense of what I've seen, that it's not as clear cut as you might feel from having seen this presentation. The second aspect of it is that um, the effect itself that's being described, Ray spoke of you know, the, the thermal heating as being the one aspect, the one biological effect of um, radio frequency radiation that uh, is, is known and established. And that is, is still the case. I mean, there, is all sorts of, uh, there are all sorts of efforts to find others. There's, um, you know, uh, very recently uh, a gentleman named Bill Bruno, who's at Los Alamos and who's prominent in the anti-Wi-Fi uh, cosmos, um, wrote into uh, the Journal of Biophysics saying that there, there's probably a piezoelectric uh, rectification phenomenon at work. People are, are looking for things, but so far they haven't found anything that, that they can establish. So, um, and the effects too. Uh, when you talk about electrosensitivity, um, the same Bill Bruno is, uh, considers himself electrosensitive. Um, this uh, Freiburg appeal, Freiburg <coughs> appeal, 2002 in Germany, uh, from a bunch of doctors and researchers there, who felt that there was an increase in, uh, that could not be coincidental between cell phone use and headaches, fatigue, uh, insomnia, ringing in the ears. The problem is, I'm sure as all of you know, those symptoms are consistent with a lot of different physical uh, conditions, including just plain old stress. And there are studies also suggesting that a lot of the, the um, physical symptoms that could be attributed to electrosensitivity are just problems, stress problems that arise from having <coughs> cell phones. I mean, the downside of having the world at your fingertips is that the world has you at its fingertips. So these, these effects are really hard to disentangle. Um, so hard that I think you have to say, at least I have to say, that the case is not, is not shown. Now, um, so far, I mean, this is a sort of um, the case against the case against Wi-Fi. You could take that same argument and make it against anyone who tried to make a case for the absolute safety of Wi-Fi. It's just not known at this point. It's not known to the degree that um, that you can give an absolute guarantee. Um, then we get to the third part. The third part, however, is is specific to the case against Wi-Fi, and, and this is a problem that I have with this, um, the application of the precautionary principle, which, um, as, as Ray is saying, would involve essentially pulling the plug on Wi-Fi in the school and going to hardwire, pending, getting to some place where we can say that Wi-Fi is safe, which, you know, given what I was just saying, is not entirely likely anytime soon. Um, the precautionary principle is a, is, is a very reasonable thing. It, it's basically, you know, be careful of what you don't know because it might hurt you. Um, I don't think it's, you know, be terrified of what you don't know because it will definitely really hurt you. Um, it, it has to be, you know, applied with a sense of balance, with a sense of perspective. And um, in this case, too, the... Uh, you know, when we talk about new technologies, we have um, the precautionary principle is applied to genetically modified organisms. Um, in this particular case, it may make sense since this is a new technology, but Wi-Fi and cell phones 
are essentially applications of, of radio technology, which is quite old, um, you know, over 100 years old. Uh, we, it may put us in different encounters with it, but it's not essentially anything dramatically new enough to warrant a drastic precautionary principle approach. And unlike Ray, mm -hmm. who was so efficient in his delivery, uh, did not go over his time, I have hit it. So. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Thank you very much. Thanks.